day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A special welcome to our guests and visitors this day, especially those joining us online and here in house. We are so glad that you're here with us. We gather this day to exercise our faith, to be renewed and reminded that trusting God and believing in Jesus isn't just a Sunday endeavor. It's a daily adventure. And so we're here to get us off with a boost for the week ahead. I want to extend some thank yous this morning. Thank you to all of you who donated uh, desserts that were served yesterday for Bill Stahl's memorial service. Thank you to the servant hands and helping hearts that helped out in the kitchen. Um, I also want to ask that you would continue to keep Sarah Stahl in your prayers as she mourns Bill's death, especially this week, because Wednesday they would have celebrated their 54th wedding anniversary. And so for those of us who have lost loved ones, we know those special dates on the calendar can be exceptionally painful. So please continue to pray for Sarah Stahl and family and friends. <coughs> You've noticed our worship space looks a little bit different today. It's quilt and kit blessing day. Look around you. Look at these beautiful quilts. My confession is with the temperature change and the season change, I'm a little chilly. And I, I kind of want to just wrap up in one of these today. So I want to tell you, you're going to have two opportunities to put your hands on them today. One, when we do the blessing, and then secondly, after worship, we're going to ask that you stay and help a few minutes um, to carry the quilts and the hygiene kits and school kits that are up here down to the parish hall. We're going to set them on a table in the far corner over by the bookshelves, and so if you could help do that, that would be greatly appreciated. I want to take a little inventory here. If you are someone who has come even one time on a Wednesday, usually, or even in the evening, to help put together these quilts, would you raise your hand for me and just keep them up? All right. If you are someone who has sewn at home or cut out quilt squares at home, would you raise your hand? All right. If you're someone who made a donation or who has donated supplies to this project, would you raise your hand? If you're someone who's provided refreshments for the work days, raise your hand. All right, we had someone just a couple people just a couple weeks ago that helped string the school kit bags. Who helped with that? Who sewed those school kit bags? You're all putting your hands down. I want to keep them up, keep them up. Come on, it's exercise. Today is exercise our faith day here at St. Paul. All right, what am I missing? If you helped assemble the school kits and hygiene kits last week, hands up. If, did you donate boxes for these school kits, hygiene kits, quilts to be packed in? Are you someone whose pickup truck we have used in the past or will be using to deliver these? All right. My point is, a lot of hands are up around the room. It takes many helping hands and servant hearts to bring God's love, not just to our own community, but clear across the world. And so we are celebrating that this day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to invite you to something else this week. On Wednesday, October 5th, Who's got pets in their homes? Cats, dogs, fish, lizards, rabbits, uh, iguanas, that's kind of a lizard, gerbils, hamsters, snakes. No snakes. No snakes. <laughs> no snakes. I would bless a snake for an enough. I'm inviting you to pull up in front of church here for a special blessing for your pets. Now, if you've got cows or pigs or horses or elephants or giraffes or anything like that, at your home or your farm and they're not easy to transport, I'd be happy to come to your farm and bless your whole flock uh, and your farm. So let me know. Um, it's really important that we 
connect not just human life, but all creatures in this world and give thanks to God for them. So I'm looking forward to meeting your beloved pets. <coughs> Likewise, if you have lost a pet this past year, that's a significant loss for you and your family. I would be happy to pray with you and mention your pet by name. Perhaps I have not even known that you lost your pet. So drive up anyways and let me bless you and remember your pet with you. Brent and I will have special treats for everybody, right? Unless you have a snake, Brent's going to step away and just observe. He doesn't like snakes, but that's all right. So Jean, I returned that snake to the family who let us borrow it. So you can't antagonize Brent with a snake this week, okay? All right. I want to draw your attention to your bulletins. We're going to move the quilt blessing to right after the children's message, just so you know. And I want to draw your attention to the insert. All right? On the insert, uh, we are missing a very special birthday. Craig Stein, uh, newly baptized last Saturday, has a birthday on Tuesday the 4th. So, drive by, honk, call him on the phone. Uh, do whatever you can to wish Craig a happy birthday since we missed printing that. It is, however, listed on the prayer list in your newsletters. So, empty your mailboxes today, take home your newsletters, uh, look at all the fun upcoming events we have here at St. Paul. I also want to lift up uh, that we have new life in our church as of last week on the 27th. If you can see grandma's glow and great grandma's glow back here, like the east side of the church has all the glowing today. We welcome Vera Marie, daughter of Natalie and Nathan Hill, to our church family. We give congratulations to grandma and grandpa, Lisa and Doug Hill, and great grandma and grandpa, Elsie and Ron Belcher. It was Logan. I'm sorry? Logan, not Nathan. Oh, I said Nathan. Sorry, Nathan's <laughs> uncle. Logan is dad. My apologies. Uh, my sincere apologies. Thank you for that correction. So we're celebrating uh, and cannot wait to meet sweet little Vera Marie. One additional uh, invitation. Here at St. Paul, we celebrate Holy Communion every week. And we trust and believe that we are sitting at Jesus' table and is by his invitation that we are welcome to receive. So at that time, I invite you to come forward, extend your arms, receive the elements into your hands, return to your pew by side aisle, and open the, the packaging. The top layer is a cellophane layer exposing the bread. The bottom layer is a foil layer exposing the juice. For those joining us online, I invite you to prepare elements in your home, either given to you through the church, or bread, cracker, even a piece of cereal, wine, juice, even water is fine. God transcends all things and comes to us in this meal, and all are welcome to receive. If you would prefer a blessing, I invite you to come forward and cross your arms to receive a blessing. Are there any other announcements for the good of the whole? Faye. Oh, yes, thank you. I've been giving that away, but there's a little left. There is some food left from the funeral meal yesterday that Sarah wanted to share. It is marked in the refrigerator. It's all bagged up, ready to go home, so help yourself to that, too. After you carry a quilt down. All right? All right. Take, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. He, so here's a... We've been doing fellowship time after worship every week, but today we have leftover baked goods that were served at the funeral meal, baked by the people here at St. Paul. So come on down for a cup of coffee, for a snack, and carry a quilt or two down with you on your way. All right? All are welcome to join us. Take a deep breath with me. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. I invite you to stand in body or spirit, which means if it's better for you to remain seated, please feel free to do so. We begin with confession and forgiveness. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. <coughs> Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
merciful God. When we are empty, fill us. When we are weak and faith, strengthen us. When we are cold and love, warm us. That with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Congregation may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for children's message. At our noisy offering bucket. Hi there. Good morning. I really wanted some toast and jam this morning, but I can't seem to get this new jar of jam opened up. I got it, uh, where did I get this? At one of those little sales, like it's homemade and I wanted to open it, but I'm just not strong enough. Oh. All right, well, I guess I'll wait and see what happens. They say strength is a gift from God, but apparently today I don't have enough strength. Feeling kind of defeated because I would really like some jam. You think one of you could help me? Jason, could you try to open my jam for me today? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That would be a big house. Because Bridge was busy and he would, didn't have time to open my jam. <laughs> Look at you, strong child of God. Yeah, Randy, you can't open her for that part. But pulling this lid off is really important. You are strong. You are very strong. Where does our strength come from? Our strength comes from from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, for sure. You know, today in our scripture reading, we're going to hear a story of Jesus talking to his disciples. And the disciples are saying, Jesus, we need more faith. We need more strength. And you know what Jesus tells them? He says, all you need is faith as teeny and as tiny as a mustard seed. Do you know how tiny a mustard seed is? Have you ever seen one? No. <clears throat> Let me show you. Right here in one of my Bibles, I have some mustard seeds taped in there because they were given to me as a reminder that I had all the faith and the strength that it was going to take to complete seminary, to pass all of the tests. We got a lot of tests that we face in life, right? See how teeny tiny they are? Jesus says that's all you need is that little amount. Because you know what? When it comes to faith and when it comes to strength, that is a gift given to us by God. It's not about what we do, it's about what God has done for us, okay? All right, would you pray with me? Dear God, give us faith and strength for every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, can I ask your help with blessing the school kids? <coughs> Uh, hygiene kits and the quilts today. All right, here's what we're going to do. Let me tell the adults first because, you know, they want to help too, okay? You all who are seated in your pews, you're just going to stay where you're at, and I'm going to invite you to lay hands on the quilts in front of you or behind you. Uh, go ahead and do that. You kids here, we've got school kits and we've got hygiene kits. So I'm going to ask you to grab one and hold on to it or come over here and touch a quilt, okay? Every single one of you. When do you want a backpack or a hygiene kit? 
How about a backpack that matches your hair bow? There you go. You hold on to that. Amelia, let's get you in your daddy one, too. Daddy's a school teacher. School kit seems appropriate. Mom's is a school teacher. All right, ladies, how about yourself? Grab a school kit, grab a backpack, touch a quilt. All right. These are the fruits of our labor for a whole year in front of us. With the exception that we have blessed some, we will be blessing some school kits and backpacks that are already boxed up. There's 85-ish school kits, and how many health kits would you get? So 85 health kits, 180 Ooh. ballpark of the backpacks. Ooh, 180 backpacks. That means 180 kids are going to be able to go to school because we're sending these kits and 85 hygiene kits, and 50 plus quilts. That's amazing, that is amazing. All right, let us pray. Well, Lord our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts. A good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns, now we offer to you the fruits of our labors, the quilts and backpacks and hygiene kits that we have made. We dedicate these quilts and kits to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each quilt or kit is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items, making each piece we have created an expression of love. There is no way of, for us to imagine the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt, a hygiene kit, or a school kit to radiate your love from us to the world. May these be used in your service and become blessings for all those who receive them. Lord, we know that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all our being. Draw our hearts to you. Guide our minds. Fill our imaginations. Control our wills so that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and in compassion and care for all your people. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. Children, thank you for blessing these school kits and bags. We're going to leave them here, or you can set them in the front pew. And you're welcome to return to your pews. But Miss Joanne, give them a wave so they can see you. Miss Joanne has a new devotional booklet for you and your worship bulletins. If you would see her on your way back to your seats, okay? Great. Or you want to pick up down here? Good job. We turn our hearts and our minds to the Holy Scriptures. A reading from Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And you will not listen, or cry to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand in my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalms will be read responsibly by whole verses. 
Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass they away. Put your trust in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your face like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Be raised alone. Do not be provoked. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. A reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on, my, on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join me with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the, the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and more mortally to life through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Later, you may eat and drink. 
Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Increase our faith, the disciples begged Jesus. Have you ever desired stronger faith, more faith? Have you ever coveted the faith of another person? I know there have been times in my life when I felt like my faith wasn't strong enough. There have been times in my life when I have looked to another and leaned on their faith to strengthen me. Our faith get put to the test in our everyday living. But how does Jesus respond to this question of please increase our faith? He uses an example of a teeny tiny seed and he tells them, if you only had this much faith, you could order this mulberry tree to go to the sea. He's saying, all you need is a little, and you can still do mighty things. My dear siblings in Christ, faith is a gift that's been given to us by God. We were born with faith. And when we receive this gift of faith, we do make a conscious choice to use that gift. Faith is a muscle to be exercised. Now, some people love to exercise. I don't know if anybody's willing to confess that or not. And some people, exercising is a big chore. There are lots of people that invest a lot of money into exercise equipment. Because if they have the big fancy treadmill or the total gym workout system and they spent money on it, they're probably going to use it. Or maybe not. I inherited a treadmill that once was served as a clothes rack and now it serves as a dust collector in the basement of my former home where my son lives. Expensive workout equipment doesn't always make us do the exercise. But some people take advantage of accountability partners to help them exercise and get strong. And some people purchase gym memberships. Because if you invest some money, you're probably more apt to go where the money has gone. And this is all for better physical and emotional well-being. What about our spiritual well being. God has made an investment in you. God has paid the full price for your membership into the kingdom of God through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And it's through him that you have been forgiven of all the sins you have committed, of all the sins you will commit today, and all of the sins that you will commit in the future. All of them gone. One membership in the kingdom of God given to you as a gift through Jesus' death. That is faith. That is the faith that we cling to, that Jesus died for us so that we may be forgiven. In this beginning story, the disciples are wondering, how can we forgive? We don't have it in us to be forgiving. And Jesus says, yes, you do. When you put faith to work, it grows. When you exercise, you are strengthened. 
when our faith is put to the test, when we are given opportunities to trust God is at work in and through us, strengthening us for the journey ahead. That is how faith grows. Faith is an action word. We have gathered here in this time and space of worship in faith, trusting that God is here with us. And we will be sent out those doors in faith to share the love that we have experienced with the world outside these walls. Our ministry teams here in the church do projects like Lutheran World Relief Efforts in faith. And they trust that the neighbors clear across the world will recognize God's love through our helping hands and our loving hearts when they wrap these blankets around themselves, when they lay them on the ground for their family to gather and eat, when their kids are now able to go to school because they have a school kit that costs us less than six dollars. Otherwise, the children don't go to school. And hygiene kits. There is nothing like a brand new towel and a fresh bar of soap. This is our faith at work, trusting and believing that through our minimal efforts, God's love will reach someone else clear across the world. And we may never see their face. We may never hear a thank you. But it's the love of God in our hearts that has grown to do this work, to sustain this ministry. We have a daily workout that takes place not only in our hearts and our minds, but in our world. It's a daily workout for us to shine the light and the love of Christ so brightly that others may see it. It's an exercise program for us as Christian people to get out there in the world and to do what God has called us to do, to love others as we would like to be loved. That means without any exceptions, loving all because God loved us. The disciples, they struggled to understand this love. They struggled to understand how to forgive. They struggled to understand what it was like to be a faithful follower of their Messiah. But it is through Jesus that they were forgiven and they were guided and directed. And it is through Jesus that we are forgiven and we are guided and directed because of God's gift of faith that has been instilled in you at the moment of conception. That small, tiny faith that has grown throughout your life through service and work in this world through prayer and gathering as faith community, through experiencing God's love in your serving and in receiving from others. We learn to exercise our faith when we forgive and when we love others as God has loved us. God is here right now. God is here to spot you every time that you have an opportunity to do something amazing for the benefit of another human life. God is there to cheer you on with every opportunity that comes your way for you to use your faith that has been given to you. Don't let your faith be like the treadmill that collects dust 
or the dumbbells that are back in the back of the closet or the great workout gear that you bought because you thought if you bought a new workout suit, you might actually use it. Faith is meant to be taken out and exercised and used every day, not hung in a closet or just sitting in a pew on Sunday morning. But like any good workout, you'll be exhausted. And at the same time, you'll be pumped up for another round. My friends, Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us, encouraging us to exercise our faith, to strengthen those muscles. And he provides you with the sustaining power of all the strength you need, all the mercy, all the love that you are to share, and all the grace that you need to quench your thirst and to enliven in you a spirit to exercise your faith and strengthen it every day through the love of loving thyself, loving our neighbors, both near and far. Thanks be to God. Amen.
together in trust and hope, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, we pray for your holy church in every place, and for those who serve following the example of Christ. We especially lift to you Bishops Elizabeth Eaton and John Roth, Pastors Maria Bonine, Brad Fry, Kathy Boland, and Krista Stokey, Synod Authorized Minister Todd Slingerlin, and Missionaries Emily Petty, Kevin and Sarah Witt, and family. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, Creator God, we pray for parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, especially those affected by Hurricane Fiona and Hurricane Ian. Relieve those affected by these storms, by floods, by wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, and tornadoes. God of grace, God of wisdom, we pray for every nation and for those entrusted with authority. Grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, compassionate God, we pray for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect. Heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are suffering with illness, grief, or loneliness, wrap them in your arms of love. God of grace, holy God, we pray for this in every congregation. Rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together, exercising their faith that all will come to know your love more fully. God of grace, eternal God, we give you thanks that you have abolished death and for the saints who have died and fought the rest in you. Bring us all to eternal life with you. God of grace, Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It's a time in our service where we receive our tithes and our offerings. I ask that the tithes and offerings be brought forward at this time. If you're joining us online, the uh, offerings received here at St. Paul don't only support the ministries of St. Paul, they help to support the whole mission of God for the whole people of God. And so I invite you to make contrib contributions to St. Paul ELCA at 2293 East U.S. Highway 40, Altamont, Illinois, 62411. I invite you to stand in body or spirit for our offertory song. Thank you.
gracious God. In your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who after his resurrection sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations and promised to be with them even till the end of age. And so with the glorious company of all the apostles, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
I invite you to stand in body or spirit. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey and with blessings. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.